Hi all, when I had finished watching a video in my inbox and had digested that information, I found myself just sadly shaking my head. The video was a reply to a video by a Muslim who felt he had found all answers that a human would ever ask about all the gods we have today, and then some. He also astounded me with his impeccable logic thinking and perception skills, such as is demonstrated by his statement that a tree is a tree, well, until there's other data. You know, or when I walk outside and I see a tree, I don't expect it to be something other than a tree unless there's some sort of data that tells me otherwise. Wow. The Muslim has given himself the username Dawa Films and is someone that I've largely ignored up until now due to the lack of substance and someone I would put in a league with the other magnificent specimen of a deluded human, the weird and wonderful Aminakim, with whom he could, and maybe should, produce makeup ads. If I were a psychiatrist, I would probably mention something about narcissistic blah, blah blah blah, but I'm not, so I won't. But this time, he came up with an argument regarding proof for gods, something I'd heard before from other Muslims who seem to think, just like Dawa Films does, that this case is now closed, which obviously deserves a closer look. As is the case with other deluded humans I call theists, it is always hilarious when they pretend they understand atheists or know what an atheist thinks. Dawa Films proceeds to show this in two points. His, what he calls, minor point is that he thinks an atheist is an atheist because of science, which is plain stupid. He then paints himself into a corner by demonstrating that there can't be any scientific proof for the god that he has himself designed and defined as being unscientific. But his major point is that his religion is somehow normative and this was established by science. Thus, this is now the definition and does not require any further proof or evidence by any theist. Case closed. We can all go home now and pray. I don't know to which god, but I'm sure Dawa Films has equally impressive proof that this happens to be his favorite god who requires to be prayed to or prayed at. Hmm. I am a little at a loss at what to do with his usage of normative, which I think he thinks means conforming to a norm or adhering to what is the norm. What I think it means is that something must already have been established to be a norm or shaping a norm. So all humans must have at all times already behaved in a similar manner. The norm for Muslims today is to pray towards Mecca five times a day. Did all humans in human history do that? No. So how can it be normative? There are people praying towards Jerusalem or the sun or not at all. So how can it be normative? But let's not nitpick. The point is that the main argument is the scientific proof which has been found for a belief in invisible gods. He even, which is highly unusual for Muslims, provides a link to the source. Well done, go put on a star. And oh yes, all the right marketing conform catchwords are there. Oxford University, International Research Project, Academics at the University, of Oxford. The £1.9 million project involved 57 researchers who conducted over 40 separate studies in 20 countries. Wow. The studies both analytical and empirical. What got me to sit up and start smiling was when it said the researchers point out that the project was not setting out to prove the existence of God or otherwise. You know if it needs to specify this, all the rest is a lie. You are almost certain the next word will be a but, written in capitals and underlined three times. <laughs> and what do I tell you? It is. <laughs> the next thing that already gave it away and killed the credibility of this article was the name of the project owner, Dr. Justin Barrett, who led the CRT project, the Cognition, Religion and Theology project. He works at the Oxford Institute of Cognitive and Evolutionary Anthropology, or more precisely at the Centre for Anthropology and Mind, which already sounds a bit less impressive. His opinion is that every mind is preconditioned to believe in a god and you need to indoctrinate someone into being an atheist. <laughs> 
it looks as though this is what he set out to prove. The co-director is Professor Roger Trigg, who, when you go to his page linked by the university itself, is here. Unbelievable that a secular university tolerates this. How and why the University of Oxford lends itself to this dubious research is beyond me. There are so many newspaper articles about this that they must know about this. The article chosen by Dawa Films is one of hundreds reporting on this, but the others are a bit more detailed and don't leave out the interesting stuff. What do we learn from Potola? Follow the paper, which is closely followed by my credo, follow the money. Let's do this, shall we? The newspaper says, the findings are due to be published in two separate books by psychologist Dr. Barrett in Cognitive Science, Religion and Theology and Born Believers, The Science of Childhood Religion. Project co-director Professor Roger Trigg from the Ian Ramsey Centre in the Theology Faculty at the Oxford University has also written a forthcoming book. Hmm. What? No papers? No publication of data, no peer review, no experiments, no details or explanations what was asked by whom, where and when. Are there falsifiable tests? Straight from hypothesis to book? Where have I heard that before? In science? Let's follow the other lead, the money. How can Oxford University fund such a project? Well, it turns out they didn't. If you track down the actual research sites for the CRT project, you see something interesting. The money, the four million dollars were not paid by the university, but by the John Templeton Foundation. Ah, that's why. The John Templeton Foundation? Well, a man, Sir John Templeton, became very rich in the money industry and in 1972 established the Templeton Prize for Progress in Religion, giving away 60 million dollars each year. The money from this institution was used to fund the project. And what was the goal of the project? Well, it's the overarching goal, la la la. Actually, it was to explore and research ideas about gods and spirits, the afterlife, spirit position, prayer, ritual, religious expertise and connections between the religious thought and morality and pro-social behavior. So, we have a devout Christian who thinks that people were crafted by the Christian God to be in a loving relationship with him. But he loves you. <laughs> he leads a project to explore the possibility of a built-in God in humans, funded by a religious institution bent on finding proof for a God. <laughs> Is this science? Does Dawa Films know what science actually means or represents? Does he know what confirmation bias or biased interpretation is? How did our religious zealot researcher go about researching religion? He formed a team, got people in different countries to talk to children. I have no clue whether any other research was combined with this or how they got others in different countries to cooperate, but the result is that because children can be made to believe in a god, then all humanity can too. And actually, when deposited on an island, children will start believing in a god. Apparently, there are 40 additional studies available, all linked to this one and all available at Oxford Centre for Anthropology and Mind. These are not scientific studies, but rather philosophical essays, nothing more. I could not believe this nonsense and started looking for the actual data, and I did find some of them. Clicking on show results or anything results in page not found. Pity. The few publications I did find only contained the hypotheses, but nothing on the methodology or the results. I found out that they were basing their research on earlier papers around child beliefs and religious indoctrination, such as human uniqueness in science and theology, the psychology of religion, cognitive science, religion and theology, and homo religious, theistic beliefs, deep spiritual transformation, what is spirit possession, do spirits have, the best one is do ghosts get itchy. <laughs> and religion, anthropology and cognitive science, normative judgment, it's unbelievable. 
Looking for the actual results, I found that it centered around the comparison of three and five year old children and how they changed from believing their mothers knew what was in a clothes box to not knowing while maintaining that their God would know in both age groups. <laughs> and this scientifically irrevocably proves all humans automatically believe in gods and that human thought processes are rooted in religious concepts. They also found that children instinctively believe that parts of them can live on after they die. Oh boy. While I was able to easily find other older papers along with their questions and all the statistics, I was unable to dig up any detail on this project. I just found some summarized results without any of the necessary underlying data, such as children and adults have a tendency to see the natural world as having function or purpose. Wow. In early childhood, we have natural tendency to approach super properties to other human and world. Uh, this is unbelievable. Unbelievable. So we, we see a lot of what I consider to be highly unscientific, might this and maybe that. What I'm missing, did they ask children which have been left indoctrinated, as it were, to answer the same questions? What part of asking an undisclosed number of children undisclosed questions is scientific? Is putting the word science or scientific into a title sufficient to be taken understood as science or scientific? How is merely stating that looking whether scientific explanations for religion support or undermine religious beliefs in any way scientific? What makes this more than a simple wishful thinking? Hmm. Sorry, but it seems that anyone not indoctrinated still requires some sort of proof. And if that is not forthcoming, evidence for the existence of a god or gods. But we've not even seen this for angels or jinn or demons or any of the anthropomorphic creatures in the religious books. In my video, Why is your God special? I have shown a completely untouched tribe which does not have any God in their culture, nor in their language, nor even understands the concept. How do they fit into this? And finally, similar work has been done on adult Alzheimer patients finding that they tend to fall back on teleological reasoning. So kids are like adults, but with an important part of their brain missing. And that's why they get God right. Thank you for your time. <laughs>